hey, what's happening, people? What flush should you get? An affordable, budget-friendly flush or a high-end flush like uh, Profoto, middle of the road of, like Godax, or you know your camera manufacturer? You have to ask yourself a very simple question. How are you gonna use your flush? With flush, you have two choices, TTL and manual mode. You use TTL when the distance between you and your subject are constantly changing, and uh, when the lighting conditions are rapidly uh, changing on you, so you don't have the, the time to adjust your flush uh, manually. With TTL, it's very hard to uh, repeat the same uh, uh, exposure or have the same lighting, uh, lighting pattern, because the TTL system is making the decisions for you. With manual mode, you have complete control on your uh, flash output, and it's very easy to have uh, a repeated pattern, lighting patterns, or lighting output on uh, throughout the uh, photo shoot. When you use your flash and manual, the battlefield levels out, because all of a sudden, all these uh, bells and whistles these flashes have, they're washed out, and uh, you just uh, dial up your flash up and down manually, and uh, all of a sudden they are all the same. Now, some people are going to argue that you know the, some of these flashes are, have a more consistent uh, light output and uh, uh, color accuracy, but I uh, I think that uh, is uh, a minor thing, and you don't have to worry too much uh, at the beginning. If you are a portrait photographer and you have the time uh, to uh, set up the shot and pose your subject, you're always going to use your flash and, uh, and manual because it's very consistent and uh, it gives you the freedom uh, for your uh, artistic expressions. You can create the system under uh, $200. You're going to need a flash, like uh, this one is $85, the trigger is $40. Bucks. You're going to need a stand, $20, 30 bucks. And you need some uh, diffusion materials, you know, to uh, alter the output of your flash to have, you know, uh, a better, softer uh, light on your subject. For today, we're going to look at some possibilities we can have uh, with, uh, with this flash. And uh, we're going to go outside and we're going to do a couple of uh, shots with uh, some uh, fabric diffuser, with a shoot-through umbrella, and we're going to bounce this. Uh, uh, of a reflector. The reflector is one thing you should buy like as soon as you get your camera because it's one of the most important and a very simple tool to alter the light uh, in any uh, situation. But uh, of course you don't have to go to spend the, the money on a very expensive uh, sub boxes and uh, just a diffusion material you'll be surprised how uh, big of a difference you can get uh, uh, Oh, on your pictures, because uh, all of a sudden, you know, use a big uh, piece of fabric and uh, it becomes a huge light, very soft, and it's going to look very professional. With this little flash, you know, very uh, affordable flash, you can get very professional looking pictures and you don't have to spend all the money. Of course, if you need the rest of the uh, features this flash have, you have to go for the one it's going to fit your needs. but. If just you use it just for portraits, this is the way to go. Even for food photography or a small uh, object, a manual of flash like this is uh, a very powerful tool. As you know, outdoors you have to establish your uh, ambient light first. You're gonna underexpose it, maybe half a stop or one stop, and uh, to create a little bit more contrast. And you're gonna dial up your flash output enough to clear the shadows on your subject face. You don't have to uh, overpower the ambient too much, and you don't have to blast your subject uh, to, with too much light. You just have to make it look uh, natural, the best flash uh, used. It's very hard to say that you use a flash uh, in the picture, and it's gonna look uh, more uh, natural. We're gonna take the flash uh, outdoors, and we're gonna use uh, one-stop uh, fabric, a shoot-through umbrella, and uh, we're gonna bounce it uh, off a reflector. The um, one-stop diffusion fabric it's a very common a way for uh, videographers to alter the lights. And uh, surprisingly, not too many people are using in uh, photography. Everybody wants the fancy, you know, octa boxes, soft boxes, everything, you know, to look uh, like more professional. But in uh, videography, 
the diffusion uh, fabric is used a lot and you create a very soft uh, a light with it and for somebody who starts very is very inexpensive way to uh, diffuse your light and create very professional portraits and you'll be surprised with a little uh, setup like this and with these uh, very affordable materials you can get a very professional uh, looking pictures now we're gonna go outdoors we're gonna take some pictures and let's see what's cooking for this easy setup, we're gonna use a uh, one-stop uh, uh, fabric diffuser. I got this on Amazon, really cheap, and two A clamps. I don't want if in a situation like this, I'll use uh, a frame with the fabric. But because you know it's more money on this, we're gonna just use the simple solution, hanging the uh, fabric on this cable. We're gonna set up the flash, and I'll show you how everything goes from there. So we're gonna set up the flush on the stand. I keep the flush two, three feet away from my, my uh, diffusion fabric because I want to have uh, the flush time to spread and the fabric to become a wider light modifier. We have Lydia with us today and I'm gonna have her like maybe two feet from uh, the um, diffuser here for the fabric diffuser because we need to keep it as close as possible to the uh, diffusion material to have a nice and soft light. I'm trying to keep the flash no more like from the flash to the uh, Lydia's around like five feet, you know, something like that, five to six feet. I don't want to keep it further than that because you're gonna lose power uh, right away. And of course, like with the soft box, I'm going to have the flash kind of like uh, blasting the light in front of her, no direct on her face. So we're going to be like, you know, feathering the light to the, towards her face. She's going to pose with the, the face towards the, um, uh, the light and uh, we'll take a couple of shots. As you can see, if you put your flash in manual, you don't even know what kind of flash I have there. It can be any flash, it doesn't, it's not important. How long is the manual? It does the same thing. Of course, you know, like I told you before, there are more, uh, more uh, bells and whistles and uh, the other flashes, but this is perfectly fine for a situation like this, for a nice portrait uh, session. This is a very easy setup, you know, just with a stand, a flash, and an umbrella. I have the flash on half power, on manual. I'm going to trigger it via the remote control. We have Lydia here. She's going to pause for us. I'm uh, uh, positioning her in the shade because I don't want patch light on her. The sun is in and out. Uh, it is uh, 12 o'clock right now in Florida, middle of the day. So it's uh, very humid and uh, hot and uh, the light is very harsh and uh, we try to make the best of this situation. So I have her in, uh, in the shade. The sun is coming from my right and is why I'm positioning the light in kind of like the same general direction of uh, the light to don't uh, try to fight what is uh, already existing. I am uh, trying to work with the ambient light. So we're gonna have her, you know, uh, maybe like four feet, five feet from the, from the light. The flash is on a half power. I'm shooting with the 85 uh, 1.2 and the Canon uh, R5. We'll take a couple of pictures. subject is mandatory when you shoot outdoor in bright condition and this little flash I think is uh, doing an amazing job I'm trying just right now to open up the shadow I'm not trying to overpower the ambient light I'm just trying to do like more like a feeling light to make it look natural like the whole scene <music> try to find a background darker than your subject so it pops out or the other way around you know a lighter background and uh, uh, to create some contrast with your uh, subject have fun 
and this is under $200 setup. So for this setup, we're gonna bounce the flash of the reflector outside. This is a very uh, nice setup, to special for uh, uh, outdoors, when uh, you wanna take your flash uh, off the camera and also you don't have to carry lots of equipment. What you see, these brackets, they're easy to find on uh, uh, different websites. And uh, I use a bracket for the flash, you not know, to keep it away from the uh, reflector. And I have a reflector uh, arm on the back to, to hold it, you know, uh, straight up. I uh, keep it on an angle, like 45 degrees, you know, to have a little direction uh, uh, of the light uh, on my subject. And uh, what I did different from the other setups, I uh, pull out the panel, the wide angle uh, panel on the flash to diffuse the light, you know, to spread it uh, a little bit wider with the entire surface of the reflector to become a bigger, a bigger light source. For this setup, I'm gonna have the subject against, like with the back against the sun, because I do, I wanna use the sun as my uh, backlight and the flash will gonna be my main light. I'm gonna have it like 22 degrees from the, the so subject, aim down, you know, a couple of degrees, you know, depends. You gotta uh, adjust it for your taste. And uh, I always uh, pose the subject with nose towards the light because I don't like the double shadows and this eliminates uh, that problem. have to use your imagination all the time to make you know any light work you can use any light anytime and you can get uh, great pictures but you have to project in your head how the finished uh, image are gonna look so you have you need to have a kind of like reference mental reference you know like uh, what you want to achieve it's very important to understand the, the patterns of the light and it's very important to understand how your flash and your light uh, affects the the scene if you like this video Please check out my channel for uh, more lighting tutorials and uh, gear review. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.